Hi everyone, it's Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and I'm going to show you today how to create an overlay. This is often used in say a scrapbook page where you're overlaying it on top of your photos and then you want to embellish on top of it. Uh, you can use it for multiple applications and we're going to use several tools so the design aspect of it would be relevant for many different projects. Um, we're going to use a lot of the drawing tools, align tools, and things like that. So it can be a great helpful tip to showing how to create your own designs in the Silhouette software. So this is the overlay that we're going to create. I'm just going to move this over to the side. And then I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. And it doesn't have to be an exact size. I'm going to use the align tool on the right hand side. It's under the transform panel. I'm going to use the scale option. And then I'm going to highlight and I'm going to type 12 and then tab and type 12 and hit enter. It's going to change my page to the exact dimensions that I entered or change my square. And then I'm going to use the center to page option in the top quick, quick access toolbar and it'll take my square exactly to the center of my page. I have the center of my, my page size is set to an automatic cameo, which puts it at a 12 by 12 page, and I'm using a 12 by 12 cutting mat. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to then draw my five by seven area of my photo. Now, since this is an overlay, it's going to sit on top of our photos. So what I would, what I prefer is I'm going to have my space just a little bit smaller than my photo size. So it overlaps just a little bit and I have a little bit of wiggle room there. So I'm going to just draw my rectangle. I'm going to use once again the transform panel and the scale option. And since it's a five by seven photo, I'm just going to change this to four by eight and five by eight. It's a personal preference, oh, sorry, six by eight. It's a personal preference on what size you want to create this with, and you can play with it too. So then I'm just going to position it kind of where I want it. We'll work with that in just a minute. I'm going to use my draw rectangle tool again, and I'm going to create a space for a four by six photo. Again, I'm just going to use the transform panel, the scale tab, and I'm going to make this five by eight by three by eight to fit a four by six photo. And it's going to change the dimensions of that exactly. Now I'm just gonna create this second space right here. I'm going to hold down my Alt key. This is my favorite shortcut to create a copy, but you can also right click and choose copy paste or duplicate. You can control C or control V. I hold down the Alt key and you're gonna see that my cursor has changed to a plus sign. When I left click, it's gonna make a copy and I can drag that copy away. Then I'm just gonna kind of position it where I want it to be. I'm gonna position it up here so I can show you how to use the align tools as well. Now I'm gonna make another copy. I'm gonna move it over here and you can see that the size of it is too big for my page, but I'm just gonna change those dimensions. I'm gonna leave the height the same but I'm gonna drop the same width down to the same width as the five by seven. So I'm going to put four by eight in there and it's going to change that for me. Now you can see that nothing is aligned right now. I love using the transform panel and the align tab. I'm going to left click and I'm gonna drag a box around the two objects I want to have aligned. I think it'll be best if I start over here. So I'm going to drag my box around these two objects. I'm going to choose align right. And you're gonna notice it moved it off the page. Now I can just kind of place it over, here. move both of those back. They're both selected, so they'll move as one object. Move it back. Now I'm going to align these top two rectangles. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to use the align top. And you can't see that anything happened. They were pretty close to the right um, areas. I'm gonna kind of move this back down here so it's a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna select these two rectangles and I'm gonna use the align bottom. You're gonna notice that left rectangle moved down to align with this five by seven area. Now, 
what I want to do is I want to group these rectangles that are inside together. So I have selected all of them. I hold my shift key down and I click on the objects to add them to my selection box. You can see that each object in my software has a selection box around it. You can right click and choose group or you can control G and it will group them together. The reason I'm grouping them together is now I'm going to draw a box around everything. So it's going to select my 12 by 12 square and my rectangles that I've just grouped together. And I'm gonna use the center option. You can use the center option in your quick access toolbar or the center in the align panel. So now you can't really see that anything has really happened. We've just drawn a bunch of shapes. If we fill this with color, in the fill color panel, just gonna fill it with black. You can see that everything turns black. So right now what we have is we have a square layer and we've created several other layers that are on top of each other. Each rectangle that we drew adds another layer. So right now it would cut exactly how you see it on the screen. So you would get the right cut that you want if this is exactly how you wanted it. We're gonna add some things to it though. First, we're gonna take this from multiple layers and we're going to condense it. And we're gonna do that by choosing Make Compound Path. And when we do, you're gonna see it took out those rectangles. So we went from having the five layers, now we're down to one layer. So if you move this, you're gonna see the areas where your photos are gonna sit. Now that I've moved it, I'm going to use my center to page again, center that back. So now we're going to embellish on this. We're going to use our text tool on the left-hand side, click into your design space area, and I'm gonna type in the word Paris. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to fill it with color. This is a visual only unless you're doing a print and cut, and it also helps you in being able to select your object. If you don't have it filled with color, then you have to select the object by clicking exactly on the red cut line. Here I can select anywhere inside the color of the object if it's filled with color. So we're gonna change our text properties. We're gonna use the text style panel to change those properties. And I'm going to use a font called LW Haley Script. And what you'll notice here is that my spacing is a little off. It's not connected, which is something we can fix. We're going to go down here to the character spacing. Again, these are your text style properties. So it's changing the aspects of your text. So we can squish that together just a little bit and you can see that that changes as we do. And then all my letters are overlapping. I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see this closer. So you can see right here on the I and the S, it's not quite there yet. I'm gonna do it one more time. So this is going to overlap. Now when, when we get to the point of welding, it's going to weld those letters that are touching together. Once you weld text, it is no longer text. So you do wanna make a copy of it or use your sticky note function, which is right here on the left-hand side. Use your draw note, it's called a sticky note, and you can add the text name. I'll click on that so you can see how that works. And I'm just gonna add a sticky note over here. So I would type in LW Haley script is the font that I used. And then that sticky note stays there with your file. So I have my Paris, I'm going to size it how I would like it. This one you can see that the, the font kind of has a slant to it. I'm just gonna rotate this just a little bit too much and it'll look a little bit odd, but I want it to overlap on my frame. So I'm going to position it how I like it so that my font, my text overlaps that bottom of that frame. 
And then I can use the zoom to page and decide how, how big I want it or where I want it placed. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna go over to my library. I'm using the newly released um, B4.2. So my library may look just a little bit different than your library looks like. I'm going to just search for Eiffel Tower and I'm going to double click on my Eiffel Tower. It's gonna to bring it into my design and I can fill this with color so I can see it better. And I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. And I'm gonna move it over onto my page. And I'm gonna make sure that the bottom of this overlaps just a little bit. So we can zoom in here. And you can see that the bottom overlaps the edge of my frame. So I'm gonna use the fit to window again. So it brings it back out to my page size. Now, once I have all my objects, how I would like them, I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna select everything. And then I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose weld. And when I do that, it's going to weld those two shapes into my frame. So you can see that it all moves as one object now. My text is no longer editable text. And my Eiffel Tower has now welded into my overlay frame. We go to the Send tab in the top right corner. You're going to see that it's going to cut everything as one piece. Now, you'll notice the dot of the eye, it's going to cut as a separate piece. Unless you connect that to something, it's just going to be hanging out there. So you want to keep in mind that. But everything else is going to be one solid cut. And there you have created your own overlay. We used the draw rectangle tool on the left hand side. We also used the test tool on the left hand side. We used the sticky note, draw a note, and added our text style font so that if we ever need to come back and question this, then we would have it. And then we also use the transform panel. The align tab and the scale tab. Hope that helps. And I encourage you to play with the tools. The best way to learn is to play, play, play. As you do, you'll get more comfortable with it. You'll learn, start to be able to create your own designs. And as you can see, I just took some very basic shapes here, some text and a design from my library and I just made an overlay with it, with those basic properties of the Silhouette software. Have a great day. Let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks.